Okay, we're coming at you from West Virginia. We're coming at you from somewhere. I'm just not sure where. But what I am sure of is joke of the day. And I know you're ready, ready, ready. And so here it comes. Why did the turkey join the band? The turkey, you know, like a, a butterball turkey. Why did the turkey join the, join the band? Because it had the drumsticks. <laughs> okay, joke of the day is so awesome. The other thing that's awesome is being able to solve the systems of linear equations by the method of elimination, sometimes called the method of elimination, sometimes called the method of addition. Um, so remember, there were three methods for solving your systems of equations. There was a method of graphing. We've already looked at that. Method of substitution, already looked at that. And now we're on the third method called the method, again, of elimination or method of addition. So remember, a system is a set of equations that can be solved simultaneously for a common solution. So we've seen systems before, but let me give you an example here. I've got two examples of systems of equations. Two equations here, that creates a system. So in order to solve that system, I am looking for the solution that is common to both of those equations. Because I do have a lot of solutions to one equation. I've got a lot of solutions to the other equation. And so what I'm looking for is that common point of intersection. If I was to take one line and graph it and take the other line and graph it, then that point of intersection would be the common solution to both. So we've looked at the method of graphing and said, wow, that's a bit cumbersome, especially if you're dealing with fractions. And so we've got the other two methods that are great shortcuts. Now, mathematicians are not creative people at all. We call it like we see it. So if this is called the method of elimination, what that means is I want to eliminate a set of variables. Now, how am I going to make that happen? Well, that's why sometimes it's called the method of addition. Because in order to make that happen, I'm going to add the two equations. So let's get into these steps. And I'm going to kind of jump down a little bit to step number two. We're going to, uh, actually step number three, we're going to start there. So my goal, remember, is to add the two equations so that one or potentially both of the variables is eliminated. One or both of the variables is eliminated. Now, let's take a look at that first example so you can see what I'm talking about here. Yes, we'll come back and fill in those other two steps. But I want to go ahead and look at this first example. So if I'm going to add these two equations, and let's go ahead and add these two up. Now, when I do, my 2x plus 2x will give me 4x. But notice here that when I add them up, a negative y plus y cancels out. And so therefore, that y has been eliminated. I am down to one variable. Now an 8 plus 4 will give me a 12, but since I'm down to one variable, can I solve for that var variable? Oh, absolutely. All I have to do is go through and divide by 4, and that will tell me that my x is a 3. Now, I remember, I'm looking for the point of intersection. That point is going to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. I have figured out the x-coordinate. How would I figure out the y-coordinate? Well, yeah, in the previous method, in the method of substitution, we said once we figured out one of the variables, all we have to do is take that 3, plug it into either one of the equations where I see an x, we'll be able to solve for y. So once we get down to that one variable, this method of elimination, also called method of addition, is very similar to the method of substitution. In other words, the two methods start differently, but midway, they are exactly the same method. So I'm going to take this 3, and I can toss it in here or here. It doesn't matter where. You know what? I'm going to toss it right down here into this one. Now when I do, I have 2 times 3 plus y equals 4. 2 times 3 is 6. And notice that that y, I can get it by itself by subtracting 6 on both sides. That will give me y equals negative 2. And now I know the y coordinate for my point of intersection. Now remember, this needs to be a, a solution to the system. And we talked about this in a couple of videos before. And in order for it to be a solution to the system, it has to work in this one as well in this one. So it's very important that I check it in both equations to make sure that it works in both. Well, if I take that 3 and plug it in here, 2 times 3 is 6. And then when I take that negative 2 and plug it in here, subtracting a negative 2 is really adding a positive 2. So I'll have 6 plus 2. Yeah, that's 8. So it works in that one. But remember, it's got to work in both to be a solution to the system. So now let's take the 3 and plug it in here. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus a negative 2 is 4. Yep, that's what I wanted. 
So I know that this is in fact a solution to the system of equations. So let's go back to those steps now that we kind of got a feel for this. And like I said, it starts different than the method of substitution because we're going to add the equations in order to eliminate a set of variables. But once we have eliminated that set of variables, we're going to be able to solve for that remaining variable. And then just like in the method of, su of substitution, we're going to take that value and we're going to substitute it into the original equation, into one of the originals. We have two to choose from, and then we'll solve for the final variable. And remember, that will give me my point of intersection. That solution is a set, and that's why I continue to include braces around it. But remember, we do need to check this solution in both equations to ensure that it is a solution to the system and not just a solution to one of the equations. Now, let's take a look at that second example, and that will lead us into these other first two steps. Notice in the second example that when I try to add the two equations, something really strange is going to happen because I can add these two, but this is all out of whack because I've got my x and my y together on one side of the equal sign, my constants on the other side. That's not what's happening down here. So things are not lined up like they were up here. They were lined up beautifully, so I could just add down the line, add down the line, add down the line. So I need to do a little bit of rearranging here to make sure things are lined up properly so that I can add down the line. So the easiest thing to do in order to rearrange them is to put them in this form right here. This is what we call standard form. Standard form has your x and y together on one side of the equal sign and it has your constant on the other side. So our first step, quite frankly, will be to make sure that we write both equations in that standard form. And remembering that that standard form looks like ax plus by equal to c. And if we have both equations written that way, we can just add up down the line. We skipped that step in the first example because it was already written in standard form. We were fine. But you can see that in the second example, it's not that way. So this one already being in standard form, I don't need to rearrange it at all. I'm just going to copy it over. However, this one, in order to put it in standard form, I need to add that 6y to the other side. So when I add the 6y to both sides, that will give me a 4x plus 6y equal 9. Now they're in standard form, and I'm ready to add them up. But remember, when I add them up, I want to be able to eliminate a set of variables. If I add them the way they are, I will get a 6x and a 9y. I haven't eliminated anything. So is there an adjustment that I can make so that when I add them up, they will eliminate? Well, certainly. I can take one of those equations and I can multiply it by something that will create what will allow them to eliminate. So let's say, for instance, that we take this top equation up here and let's say that we multiply it by a negative 2. Now when we do, we will get a negative 4x minus 6y equal to a negative 8. And I'm going to carry this one down below it. But notice that I will eliminate a set of variables when I add them up. Because negative 4x plus 4x cancels out to be a 0. Negative 6y plus 6y cancels out to be a 0. Now, that will not always happen every time that you multiply one of the equations by a factor. But it, it did happen this time. The point I'm trying to get at, and negative 8 plus 9 is a 1, the point I'm trying to get at is I really need to have opposite coefficients either here or here. It's okay to have opposite coefficients in both places, but I definitely need opposite coefficients in at least one place. See, we had opposite coefficients here. That's what allowed them to eliminate when we added them up. So, not only do your equations need to be in that standard form so that everything lines up and we can add quickly and easily, but we also need to have opposite coefficients, so uh, opposites right here. So we might need to multiply one or maybe both equations by factors so that the coefficients of the x or the y, it doesn't matter which one, doesn't matter, but we need one set of variables to have opposite coefficients. And if they don't, multiply by something that will create those opposite coefficients. Now, let's take a look at what's happening here. 
This should feel familiar. One, it should feel, feel familiar from solving our basic equations, but it should also feel familiar from the method of substitution that we have looked at. Remember, we have a heart attack because the variable's gone. It's okay, breathe those smelling salts. It's okay to wipe out one of the variables. It's fine, we did everything correctly. But remember, this comes down to the idea of, is this a true statement or a false statement? This says zero is one. Well, zero is never one. So this is definitely a false statement. And remember, when we come down to the variable being gone, and we have to look at the statement to decide if it's true or false, that helps us determine what's going to be plugged in here and here and create truth in both equations. See up here, that 3 comma negative 2, that was the, the solution that I could plug into both of those equations and create truth in both. Still trying to figure out what can I put in here and here and create truth? Well, remember, if it's a false statement, think back to that method of substitution. What did we say about a false statement? Yes, we said there was nothing that would work in either one of these equations. That still holds true. Because like I said, the method of elimination slash addition, it starts different than the method of substitution, but midway through, it becomes the same method. So this is going to indicate there's nothing that works. And remember, that I would represent with my null set. So flip back to those directions again. And we're going to take a look now at that, that brown section. And it says that if both variables are eliminated and the resulting equation is a contradiction, and remember, contradiction meant that I had a false statement. Then what's going to happen is I have no solutions. But if I have so, no solutions and the solutions are the point of intersection, what does that mean about the lines? Yes, they are parallel, just as we had discussed in the video where we talked about the method of graphing, just as we discussed in the video where we talked about the method of substitution. We have parallel lines, and parallel lines means that we have no solutions. So what does it mean about my solution set? Well, my solution set can either be the empty set, remember, the bag with nothing in it, or my solution set can be that null set, which indicates the very same thing. And like I said before, what you definitely don't want to do is you don't want to have your empty set with an empty set inside of it, because this says a set with something in it. That is definitely not what's happening here. I have either literally an empty set or the null set that represents that. Okay, so I've got two more examples for us to work through, and we're going to take a look at what happens in this case. Okay, so in my next example, notice once again that it's not written in that standard form. I do have the top one written in standard form. The bottom, the, I'm really stuttering here, the bottom one is not. So I'm going to put that bottom one in standard form so that everything is lined up, and then I can quickly see um, how things are going to eliminate. So I'm going to slide that 3x over, so I have a 3x minus 9y equal to a negative 15. I'm ready to add them up, but remember, this is called the method of elimination because I want to eliminate a set of variables. Nothing will eliminate as I add. So therefore, I have to take one of my equations, I need to multiply by a factor that will create opposite coefficients so that when I add, they will eliminate. So I think I'll take my top equation, I'm going to multiply it by a 3, and when I do, notice that, and I'm going to slide it right over here, when I do, I have a negative 3x plus 9y equal to 15, and my bottom one, I didn't need to adjust it, and so now I have opposite coefficients, I'm ready to add the two equations up. Notice that a negative 3x plus 3x cancels out to be a 0, 9y minus 9y cancels out to be a 0, and like I said in the previous example, don't think that every time you multiply by a factor, you will get a 0 and all the variables will wipe out. You're going to see in this example, that's not always the case. But we'll go with that on this one. Now 15 plus a negative 15 is 0. Once again, grab those smelling salts. It's okay to wipe out those variables. It's not a problem. We check everything. We did everything correctly. So we need to look at this statement. We need to say, okay, is this statement true or false? Is 0, 0? Yeah, it is. That's true every single time. So remember, when it's a true statement and I'm trying to figure out what can I put in here and here, then what does that mean? Yes, that means everything works. But be very careful, folks. This is not my answer. My answer is not all real numbers. Because remember, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to put this thing on the 2D coordinate plane. This is graphed as a line on the 2D coordinate plane, and this is graphed as a line on the 2D coordinate plane. Now remember, when I come up with a true statement, what that really indicates is 
the two lines are the very same line. So it does indicate that every point on the line is going to be a solution to the system, but it doesn't mean everything is a solution. That's what this means. This means literally every number in the 2D coordinate plane works. That is not at all what's happening here. It means every point on the line works. So how do we write that? Go back, think what we did with our systems of equations in the method of substitution. We said, oh yeah, we figured out that when everything worked in that case, we meant the set of all points such that, and we picked one of the two equations. Well, the very same thing is going to happen here, because like I keep saying, the two methods start different, but they definitely end up different. So remember, what this indicates is the set, that's what braces mean, the set of all points that satisfy one of the two equations. It doesn't matter which equation you pick, because they are the very same equation. And so what this is telling me is all the points on that line will work and all the points on that line will work because they're all the same line. And remember, point of intersection, that's my solution. So every point on the line is a point of intersection. So let's get back to those notes one more time. And let's fill in down here in the orange part. If both variables are eliminated and the resulting equation is an identity. And remember, identity means that it is true then what happens is we have same lines. And if they are the same lines, then we have infinitely many solutions. But remember, that only tells me how many solutions I have. It doesn't tell me what they are. My solution set is the set, that's what the braces mean, of all points, there's my generic x, y, such that, and you just simply pick one of the equations, and remember, it does not matter which one you pick, because both equations mean the very same line. Okay, so let's take a look at our last example, just to make sure we feel very confident with this method of elimination, also called the method of addition. So I'm going to take these two equations, and I'm going to add them up, but notice the way that they're written, I cannot add them up, I can't figure out what goes together. So I'm going to put them in that standard form. The top one is already there, so that's good to go. The bottom one, I'm going to subtract that 8y to get it to the other side, and now they are in standard form. But I'm looking for opposite coefficients, and I'm not seeing that, so I can't add them up yet. So I need to multiply one of the equations by some, a factor that will create opposites. But notice, like for instance, I already have opposite signs here, but if I multiply this top equation, I, I can't multiply by anything to create an 8. I mean, I would multiply by 8 fifths, but wow, what a mess that will make. So maybe instead what I'll do is I'll multiply my top equation by an 8 and I'll multiply my bottom equation by a 5. Because notice that if I do that, then what happens is my top equation when I multiply by 8, I get a 48x plus a 40y. And then when I multiply negative 13 by 8, I get a negative 104. Now, if I multiply my bottom equation by 5, I get a 25x minus 40y equal to a 250. And the beauty is I have opposite coefficients right there. I am ready to add these up and eliminate a set of variables. So when I add up a 48x and a 25x, that's going to give me a 73x. Notice that the y's will cancel. Great, I've eliminated a set of variables. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. And a negative 104 plus a 250 will give me a 146. And now I can solve for x by simply dividing both sides by a 73. And when I take a 146 and divide by 73, I get a 2, meaning that they are going to have a point of intersection. These are intersecting lines. So I know the x-coordinate of the point of intersection, that's 2. I need to figure out the y-coordinate of the point of intersection. So I'm going to take this 2, and remember, since x is 2, that means I can either put a 2 here or 2 here, but when I do, I will be able to solve for that y. So I'm going to take this 2, and I'm going to go with that top equation right there. And when I put that 2 in there, I'm going to get a 6 times 2 plus 5y equal to negative 13. 6 times 2 is 12, and now I can solve for that y because I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides, and that will give me 5y equals negative 25, and when I divide by 5 on both sides, I get a negative 5. 
meaning my point of intersection is 2 comma negative 5. Now remember, this needs to be a solution to the system. So this has to work in both equations. I need to check and make sure that it does work in both. Let's take that 2 negative 5 and plug it up in here. 6 times 2 is 12. 5 times negative 5 is a negative 25. And 12 plus a negative 25, yes, it's a negative 13, so it works in the top one. Let's hope it works in the bottom one, because if it does, then it is a solution to the system. So when I put a 2 in here, 5 times 2 is 10. And now when I plug that negative 5 in here, 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. And negative 40 plus 50, yep, it's 10. So we know that this does work, in fact, in both equations, meaning it is a solution to the system. So I hope this helps with the method of solving your systems of linear equations by that method of elim elimination, also called addition. Remember, mathematicians, it's good we're not creative. We're going to tell you exactly what to do. You're going to eliminate a set of variables by adding your two equations. But the only way that that can happen is if you have opposite coefficients. So make sure that the equations are in that standard form, ax plus by equals c, and it's, you may need to multiply one or both of your equations by a factor to create those opposite coefficients, but then when you add them, you will eliminate a set of variables. And then it just rolls into the other methods at that point because you'll take that value for that variable, plug it back in to get the other variable. You'll have your point of intersection. But check it in both equations to make sure that it does work in both. I hope that helps. Have a great day.